Hey yeah. everyone. <laughs> By the way, it looks like it was the same color of like the song <laughs> <laughs> and that color okay. on my computer. Because uh, like I'm partially colorblind, so I have a colorblindness filter, and so they probably made it even more the same color. So <laughs> <laughs> anyway. So welcome everyone to today's brown bag. I'm Samer Matur. I um, have been with Solum since September. I've been doing uh, mobile development since uh, 2016 January, and even more than that before, but not Xamarin specifically. And uh, today we would uh, we are going to build our first iOS and Android apps, and then uh, we're going to see how we can. Build it a little further so that we can connect and actually um, control stuff in the physical world. All right. <clears throat> so, is, is everyone able to hear me on the call? Am I loud enough? <laughs> yeah, that sounds like a yes. <laughs> so, um, what, what should your priority be when you're building apps? Like, you know, have, have any of you thought of like really cool ideas that you were like, oh, I've got to make this into a mobile app, you know, or someone has to build it for me, you know, like, oh, I need to find someone who can build a mobile app so I can like become rich, you know. So like we've all been in that situation. Uh, so this is like moving to the next step. Like what should our priorities be when we're building a mobile app? Like obviously, you know, companies, the executives higher up, they want a mobile app that's like the best. They're like highest rated mobile app. Like, that's literally their focus. They don't care about anything else. They're like, it has to be five out of five. You know, like, yeah. I mean, the, the projects I'm working on right now, they're, like, they are the highest rated mobile app, but they're like, you know, it has to stay that way. Do whatever it takes. Um, and how do you rate, how do you rate that? Like, on the App Store, whenever people download okay. it, they use it, okay. you know, yeah. ratings and stuff like that. Um, for, on a developer standpoint, like, what you had to make sure is that there are like thousands of different devices out there, thousands of Android devices. Now there's, you know, tens of like different iOS devices. You gotta make sure that it works for all of them, like across all of them. And so you gotta make it agnostic. And then you have to make sure that it, it integrates well with your backend services. Like, you know, whatever you use to get your data has to work. And then finally, you're not gonna be working on that project forever. So hopefully not. So you want it to be <laughs> easy for other people to pick it up, you know, like if they get a junior, especially like as a as Sloan does, you know, we go in, build, and you know we hand it over. So that's what we try to focus on. Cool. Um, so this is a very common question that comes up, um, like hybrid versus cross-platform mobile development. So a lot of people don't want to do native mobile app development because they don't want to learn Swift. You know, Swift is very, very specific to iOS development, iOS and Mac OS development. And like people who do web development, they're like, ah, you know, why should I learn another language, you know? And only for iOS when there's also Android, and Android has more users. And then um, Android, you had to learn like Java and now it's Kotlin, you know? So it's like, how many languages am I going to learn, you know? Such a waste of time. So uh, they, they came out with like hybrid mobile development where you could uh, use like HTML CSS and make an app, you know, with just HTML CSS. But it was very not native. Like you, you can't, you know, get like these beautiful icons and flows. It just looks like a website. Hey, what's up? What? Oh, look at that. Chris, we were just talking about um, like you know creating your first mobile app using you know, on iOS and Android, and then we're going to do a little bit of microcontroller stuff. So we're talking about like hybrid and cross-platform, and then one of the key components of hybrid development is that you only use one, uh, you use multiple languages, but cross-platform development you use only one language. So for example, Xamarin, you only use C sharp, but some people can make that also into like hybrid. But you really want to stay with one language, make a cross platform like Flutter, Google's version of Xamarin, uh, you use this language called Dart, you know? So uh, React Native, you use uh, JavaScript, you know? So 
what you want to prefer is cross-platform instead of hybrid. There's a lot of like, oh yeah, maybe this is also hybrid, but don't worry about that. We're specifically going to focus on Xamarin because that's what I've been doing for a while, and it's owned by Microsoft. There's a lot of support, a lot of integrations with Azure, basically a lot of uh, advantages of going with with them. Th their mission is to make you know great creating great apps you know really beautiful, fast and easy. Um, and they have these Zami awards, so it, you'll notice that it's not that difficult to make actually really beautiful um, flows with using Xamarin. <coughs> Within Xamarin, there's two different ways of making apps. There's Xamarin Native and there's Xamarin Form. Xamarin Form is what we're going to do today. It's the future. It's modern. I've been doing both. I, I still do Xamarin Native. It's significantly more difficult. And, <laughs> and uh, so Xamarin Native is also called traditional Xamarin. And um, basically anything that you do in Objective-C and Swift on iOS and Java and and Android can be done in c -sharp, like everything. Mm. So it's, it's very, very powerful, yet it's very tedious because of the fact that, you know, um, here's, here's why. Here's why it's, uh, it's good. Here's why it's still being used. So let's say you want to display something on uh, your phone and you had to process it. So this person hasn't paid his bill in the last three months, so you have to add up all those values and then you know display that the sum of all those values. So with a shared backend, you can just do all that calculation once. So make sure that you know you don't make any. If you make any mistakes in those calculations, it gets shared across. So you just had to fix it in one place and it gets fixed in both places. We see a lot of value in this, but Xamarin Forms, relatively new. Um, they go one step further with shared UI code. So you not only share that business logic, but you also share the controls. Like, oh, show, uh, you know, create a label over here, and you still create a label. Otherwise, over there, you still had to create a label on iOS, label on Android. And it's very easy to get started over here. Like, if you have .NET skills, like, you can, in, in like, maybe a month, you can get your hands wet and do like maintenance on a project. So it's pretty powerful. <clears throat> Xamarin is pretty reliable. They are always like up to date. You know, they're not slow on their updates. Like whenever iOS announces a new OS platform, Xamarin like makes sure that the uh, APIs are updated so everything's fine. You don't have to worry about all of what I said if, you, if you're a beginner. So if you're a beginner and uh, you know, I hopefully convinced you that Xamarin is a good platform to get started with. This is how you start development. This is the fundamentals of Xamarin form. Very, very simple. Try to understand the concept and you're golden. <clears throat> Behind, like, in, on the UI side, there's pages, layouts, and then views. Pages, layouts, views. Pages, layouts, views. Pages, layouts, views. Okay? So, <laughs> pages, essentially, there's like, um, content page, there's a master detail page, you know, where, where you slide in and slide out. Uh, navigation page, you navigate through the pages. There's tab pages, you know, the tabs at the bottom or in the top in Android. Um, carousel page, you know, where you slide, swipe like that. So choose which page you want for a certain, you know, like for the home screen, you probably want to use like a content page if it's basic. So once you've selected that, now what you want to select is what kind of layout you want to use. Okay, so this was easy. Pages, you know what you want to use. Layout. Now, do you want to stack everything downwards? Like, you know, uh, when you're adding uh, stuff, do you want it to go one and then, you know, one below that, one below that, or do you want to have a sideways app? You know, you probably don't want to sideways that, but you can do it. <laughs> okay? Um, so you probably want to stack layout, and then if you want to be able to scroll in that stack layout, you put this layout inside that layout. So you cannot have pages inside pages, but you can have layouts inside layout. Cool. Okay? You have to have a layout inside a page. Once you select what layout you want, you can, you know, mix and match. So, for example, if you want um, one of these layouts over there, one of these stacks, to be a horizontal scroll view, you know, so you can see uh, your friends list or something, you know, your 
or uh, friend suggestions, you just put the scroll view over here and then make it horizontal. That's it. And then, so pages, layouts, and views, what are views? Image, button, label, you know? That's it. It's that simple, guys. So, uh, like, this is like one way of developing it using XAML. I don't like doing it that way. I think it's too complicated. It looks ugly. Huh? Did you just say XAML? Or XML? Yeah, it's XAML. XAML. Oh, XAML. Okay. <coughs> you don't need to know it, but I'm just saying this is ugly. Is that okay. a, a Try not to use it, huh? That's a Xamarin type version of XML? Yeah, no, it's, it's, a, it's a Windows. Type. Like they've Microsoft been using it for, for a while. Yeah. For a while. Yeah. They started with the like back in the day. Yeah, and so if you notice over here, it's there's a page, like there's a page, content page, and then there's a layout, stack layout, and then there's these entry, entry button. Entry is basically where you enter stuff inside. All right, you, you don't even know what, you know. Or .net. It's, it's just like, yeah. So what if you want to like have a carousel of images, but you also want to be able to go back up to free how do you do that if those are different pages? Okay, so um, wait, a carousel inside what? Well, because you have like carousel page yeah. and then you have navigation page. But what if you want to have a carousel of images, but then you also want to go back, be able to go back to the previous yeah, page? Yeah, that's a really good question. So what you want to do is, let's say you use a master detail page or you use a tab page. Uh, you probably use a master detail page because you want to go back. So you use the master detail page, you click on, uh, you know, another page, make that a carousel page, and then, you know, just basically hit that button again and select whatever other page you want. Will each page type have navigation to and from somewhere? It depends on if you use a navigation page. So if, if um, you want this, okay, let's say you want this inside another page, then you have uh, this as a, nav as a navigation page over here. And then once you click that inside there, it will go to that carousel page. So then it will have like a navigation button by default. So you can have a header and a footer okay. regardless of the type of page. Yeah, you could basically have a header and footer. Like, like, how do you get out of the carousel yeah. page? Yeah. I mean, carousel is good. I'm just browsing. They, they, no, they, also have a carousel, uh, they also have a carousel view. Yeah. So, okay. so then, you know, like it depends on how you want it because this is, Basically, you know how some apps, they don't have buttons at the bottom, they're just carousels, yeah. you know? Uh, like The flow of the, of the app is the actually the, going yeah, back and forth. Back and forth, okay. yeah. Um, okay, get it started. So, you guys understood, so pages, layouts, views. That's all you guys had to remember over there. Pretty straightforward. Getting started. Mm -hmm. How do you get started? All you got to do is download Visual Studio. So, this, you know, when you're downloading, it'll ask you for stuff like this. It allows you to install like Android SDK, the blah blah blah. You don't have to worry about it. Just hit yes, yes, and you know you're downloaded. So it's pretty straightforward. Now, <clears throat> here it is. So, um, let me create a new solution. Oh wow! From scratch. From scratch. That's scary. <laughs> 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 All right. So so so. Okay. So once you have Visual Studio installed, no, 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 I, I don't, I don't want to. Sure. Yeah. Once you have Visual Studio installed, file new project. That's it. Like all you got. That's all you got to do. File. Wait. Here. Let me. Let me do it again. <laughs> let me. Let me close solution. Like totally blank. So when you install Visual Studio, this is what you land on, guys. Like. You guys can fulfill your dreams of becoming rich. Wow. 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 Build, that, build that amazing app. It is this. Look at that. New project. <laughs> New project. Uh, <laughs> oh my gosh, come on, computer. <laughs> okay, yeah. So multi-platform app, blank forms app. Right. Hit that. And then, I mean, you can do it in F Sharp if you are super zealous, but I don't. <laughs> I am not, personally. Let's say app name. Solemn build. Okay, so um, on the right is basically how it'll look. It's kind of saying, hey, that's not a good app name because that's too big. So, <laughs> four. Solemn Toro. Toron. Solemn two from Toe. There you go. There you go. All right, cool. Except because it's demo form. <laughs> anyway. Uh, next, 
We're doing pretty good on time, guys. <laughs> <laughs> so um, create and bam. Bam, bam. Oh, we're rich. You're rich. Oh, we're rich. We're rich, yep. guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So um, my phone's connected. So if I if I just click play, it'll build on my phone, and I have an app on my phone already. Like wow. it's just like that. And to connect to your phone is not that crazy hard, or is it hard? No, it's it's not crazy hard. Um, you do have to activate developer mode on your on your phone. Paying a hundred bucks. No, no, it's free. Okay. <laughs> it's, it's eight. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. yeah, but but I mean you don't have to do that. There's ways around it. But so here's what you do. Now now that you have this open on the top. Just hit that where it says Android and just change it to iOS. Oh. And, um, and let the, the MacBook Pro like think a bit. No, it's, it's yeah. because Apple doesn't like Microsoft. <laughs> no, no. It's because I'm. Um, there we go. Okay, and then just put it on an iPhone. And uh, play. So that's all I did. I, I didn't code at all. It was like zero code until this point. Yeah. I just pressed play. Uh, no, 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 it's not the app. No. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I didn't know that that one was open. Yeah. How many simulators do I have? Oh, so simulator is starting. Oh, I think simulator is open. Wow. That's why it's so Wow. Your machine's going to be plugging your phone and running. Yeah, no, this is an Android. I, I could connect it to an iPhone as well, but you know, everyone won't be able to see it. There we go. Welcome to Zero Point. Zero Yeah. Hey. yeah. yeah nice. Okay, now. <laughs> um, all right. So notice how over here, by default, they put it inside. Uh, these pages open by default. I did not do anything over here. So they have a content page, a layout, and a label. And they say, welcome to Diamond Farm. So what I'm going to say is, welcome, Rad. Oh. Rad. Red. Rad. 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 But we're we're not gonna do uh, much more demo. I'm gonna transfer it over to C sharp because C sharp is life. <laughs> <laughs> and see, it's building over here at the bottom. And come on, come on. Now is this like a live build, or any change you make and you save it, it gets rebuilt, or you have to hit play? You have to rebuild it. Yeah, it's not like, uh, like Flutter. Okay. Yeah. Sound like Flutter or Yeah, but let's see. Is it both? Yeah, there it is. Rad and Toronto. Right and and, right and like Sorry. I just hit start and it starts from the uh, from the left and starts from the center. So what I do generally is I um I just remove this initialized component stuff and I say um I start off saying var label equals new label. Text equals K and um, bam. Actually, I have this open. Let me just show you guys. So, so um, you guys saw how I got to this point. Pretty straightforward. Let me move over to um, here's the okay. cake show thing. What? Those uh, shows where. You know the kick's already done and uh, oh, I, oh my oh, god, that is yeah. awesome. It looks so oh, easy. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so can pull away the curtain. Yeah, look at that. That's good. So uh, the initialized component was there before. I removed it. And um, what I'm doing over here really quick is I added a label. So these are all views. Remember? A view. An entry is a view. A button is a view. You know? And then here's another label. You know, I call it the result label. And then, uh, since since it's a button, a button has uh, has an event that basically, whenever it's clicked, you can make it do something. So over here, I said button not clicked. Whenever it's clicked, you know, uh, make it go ahead and do this event. 
and this event is over here at the bottom. So basically, uh, it changes the text to something else. Okay, so let's test this out. Um, so what we want to see is that there's a label that says hey. There's an entry with a placeholder that says type your name over here. So you type your name over there. There's a button that says don't press my button, and it's colored yellow background. I mean just just look at it. Like it's so straightforward. You know, it's not like there's no like code names over here. You just have to like type, and then it'll come up. You know, background color text. It's so straightforward. It's like it's visible. True. Yes, it's visible. Text color, you know. So it's, they they make it so <laughs> they make it they make it very uh, like very intuitive, and they make it they make that learning curve much shorter. You know, it's like oh yeah, it's it makes sense to me now. Any reason why they don't call components instead of views or controls? Or controls. I mean, they they are controls, but they just call them views. Like yeah, because I guess because you view them. Yeah. Yeah, what you do. <laughs> Why do you prefer doing like layout in code? Like to me, it seems like it would be a better separation yeah. of concerns. Yeah. To let you know the, the yeah, yeah. yeah. could the business logic and set up your layout in where where you can see the structure easily. Yeah. Whereas here, I can't really see the structure. Yeah. Of I mean, what you built. like what you could. I mean, that's that's a very valid point. You know, there there are like. The parts. Like one is like, oh yeah, let's do everything in XAML. The other one is like C sharp, you know. And with XAML, you got to do a lot of binding, and it makes it more tedious. Uh, for example, if you want multiple views, you know, you could use lists and stuff like that. But like, you got to use binding if you want to use XAML. And um, when I hear binding, comes to mind MVVM. Do you have a? Yeah. 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 yeah you got to use. You know, it's 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 all like gets very Harry in that sense. But yeah, yeah, you know, it, for I think for uh, beginners, like, XAML is not the best thing to start with because it's like, oh, how does this know to get this from services? You know, they got to understand the whole concept of two-way binding, yeah, one-way binding. Way but over here, binding over here, it's like there's no binding at all. Yeah. Straightforward. So even in code, you can separate your concerns. <laughs> can you separate the view in code and you can separate the yeah. in code? Yeah, yeah. Like, you don't mean you have a listener on your yeah. button and then it's going to Stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Totally. Can you, you sorry, can you install some headings from code too? Yeah. Yeah. So you don't have to just like touch the views directly, right? And update their properties directly. Yeah. Right. Is yeah. there a recommended best practice like coming from Microsoft saying that you should use XAML or is um, XAML kind of going out in terms of the trend? Or no, no, no. XAML is coming in in terms of trend. Okay. Yeah. For beginners though, like um, I would highly suggest starting with C sharp because it's equally powerful. Programmatic. Pro huh? It's programmatically used. Yeah, it makes, you know, it's very clear. Yeah. I noticed you didn't pick a page or a layout. Oh, so, so, um, so we're already inside a main page. Oh, it's content so page. Content Perfect. Page. Exactly, yeah. And then, so we're just, uh, this is the constructor mm -hmm. of the function. So as soon as uh, this content page is made, these are like uh, these. This function automatically gets called. So, so no layout. Like you're not adding so no, a layout. You're adding uh, so directly to right now I'm no no no. You have to use a layout. So right now I'm just initializing. I, I just initialized uh, the these label, yeah. views. You know I just well, initialized the, the button. And then at the bottom over here yeah, I created uh, a layout. Yeah. yeah. Kind of laid out like it would be until it's in it. Yeah. So question, like if you <laughs> if you try doing this in yeah. demo, would you also get autocomplete and all of yeah. all that good stuff about yeah. that? You would. Yeah. So the books are in use now. Yeah, I'm sorry. Right. Take I mean, the the demo layout just reminds me a lot more of Angular. Mm -hmm. I'm, yeah. I'm super comfortable with it. Yeah. So. Yeah. yeah. Well, obviously, because you're not a beginner. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, um, you remember how the first one was labeled and there was an entry and then it said, don't press my button? And there was a result label. And so when you uh, just like, you can you can type your name over here, say blah, blah, blah. So, even, even autocomplete. <laughs> don't do it. Oh, you did it. Yeah, it does it. Rebel right there. So, <laughs> And so um, that was iOS. Really quick, uh, go over to Android, build. Um, hmm. Oh, the latest and greatest, or not? 
me do my phone. Is it down on each of those like virtual devices? Yeah, they're emulators, so you've got to download any one that you want. So in the meantime, uh, wow. In the meantime, since uh, the demo is almost over for the first part, I'm going to switch right to the second part. The second part's going to be the fun part. Oh yeah, this is just basically um, what I did, you know. So you, you can see it better. I added a few more things, but there's a content page, there's some views, and I put those views inside the layout. So the layout, and I just put those views inside it. So you know, all that stuff that I did is basically this. So then you can do some layout stuff like on either of them. Like you can yeah. center everything with the layout, or you can center the individual like views. Um. So the views uh, you make can it. Like overall, yeah. everything is centered, but I want this label to be like on the left. So then you would have to create another layout and place it inside, oh, okay. and then set that layout to be left. And you can have a stack layout inside of a stack layout yeah. inside of a stack, yeah, so you can organize the way. Yeah. 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 Horizontal stack layout and vertical stack layout. Yeah. Yeah. It gets exciting. Um, all right, this is still building. So some resources out there. Xamarin University, um, they charge $1,000 a year in order for like certification, but what they ch also charge $83 a month. And so if you finish in one month, you only pay $83. You don't have to pay a thousand. It's so weird. You got it. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I didn't know about it, and then a friend told me, and I was like, whoa, it's real hard. What's the sharing? Go to sleep. Two goals, that right. Um, and then there is uh, the Visual Studio App Center. So Xamarin, they're, they're trying to make it even more powerful by adding all these integrations. So make, they made it super easy for to add push notifications, crash, notifi uh, crash analytics, like um, CI, CD, all, all that. So they made it really easy. Like within, I would say like 30 minutes, you can um, you can add push notifications to your phone, you know, iOS and Android. Like. That's just insane. So, so they they are, are working really hard to uh, solidify Xamarin's position. And then Xamarin Docs, basically other resources for um, pretty useful. So the second part. Now, um, I don't have slides for this because this is more hands-on, and luckily we have internet. So, and we also have a little bit more time. So this. Um, what really got me into mobile development in the first place was controlling robots with phones. I was able to do it with websites, but I was like, oh, you know, it'd be cool to like do it with phones. And so I, I, I figured it out eventually. It took me like six months. Um, but uh, I created this GitHub repository for people to, you know, get there really quick. And uh, like Xamarin really helps you out over there because you don't need to learn Swift. You know, you know, uh, you Java, know all what? those crazy yeah. languages, and this is kind of like a repository. All those crazy languages, Java. <laughs> Java. <laughs> <laughs> so for people um, who are new to GitHub, GitHub is basically a place where people are able to put their code up for free, and um, other people share it and stuff like that. Um, so over here, I mentioned like all the steps to follow. I uh, you know, it says how to use this and what do you need to buy. This is a particle photon. That's what we have over here. Um, and then what code do I need to put inside the particle photon? So, um, come on. There's this website called build. Dot particle. <laughs> <laughs> come on. <laughs> Um, so, new, Safari, build. Yeah, and so over here, you, uh, this is like an environment, an IDE where you can pass the code into this, so you don't have to be connected via USB. And uh, the specific code that's in, on this device is here. So, um, Xamarin forms over, move over to like, Microcontroller development in general use C++ mostly for all the devices, like especially the Arduino. Um, over here, we basically are assigning, you know, pins D0, D7, like like you see over, you know, on a device. 
And that's turning things on and off, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. So this is deploying directly onto... So, yeah, this would... Platform. So if, if I press over here, uh, uh, verify, and then flash, it would deploy directly over here, even if this was in a different country. So how do you make that connection? Do you have to register the device on the account first, or...? Yeah, you got to register the device on the account using your phone, what I was trying to do inside. Is that like with a QR code or like... No, you just log in and... Yeah, just make sure that it's connected to the internet using your phone. Okay. Yeah, so you connect it to the Wi-Fi of this device. And then, uh, it, like, all the instructions are in GitHub over here. You know, I, I highly suggest buying one of these devices. It's like $20. But, like, the stuff that you can do is, is really, really amazing. Um, so these same devices... Um, without the cloud. So basically, Particle, Photon, they uh, charge $20 because they provide the cloud service where you can actually do stuff like this and, you know, connect it to IFTT. But otherwise, like, you can buy one of these for, like, $3. So they make $17 each, you know, off of each device that they're selling. And, you know, it's still worth the cost. And they're, they're sturdy. You just drop, like, <laughs> 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 and um, and so here, you know, I, I give you all the code that you need. And so over here, you know, every um, microcontroller has a setup function and a loop function. So, you know, and the setup function gets called only once whenever you turn it on. The loop function gets called over and over and over and over. So right now we only have a setup function. Um, and the setup function says pin mode, like basically whatever output value we put in, you know, set it over there. And uh, there is an LED toggle function. As you can see over here, particle dot function. This is where all the magic happens, essentially. There's a function called LED, and it calls, uh, there's a function called LED toggle, and um, the name of that function, I think, is LED. Not really sure. The saying, and and so essentially, what you can do is you can go to a browser, as such over here. Have any of you know about CodePen? I do. Yeah. yeah. So you can make a CodePen, very simple, very very simple, and all, uh, you know, all you got to do is say. So right now, the blue light over here, and even like this one, it's like super dim, is on. So you just say, turn the LED off. And bam. Oh, look at that. Oh, man. Nice. Yeah, and then, so, and then over here it says, oh, yeah, you know, uh, this is the response uh, JSON. You know, it's all RESTful APIs. <clears throat> and you can turn it on again. So you're just doing a post? Doing yeah. API, yeah. Yeah, I'm just doing a post. Super straightforward. Okay, I missed it, but you said in the code you have, like, your setup function or your loop function, then you had another function. So you don't have to use the loop function? No, 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 no. That, that function was being called in the setup function. So there's just there's just two functions setup and loop and then this function is called from setup but I don't see anything that uses the loop. Yeah, for now he's not using. Yeah, that's no, what I mean. So you don't have to use the loop. You don't have to. Okay. Yeah, yeah. And um, and so yeah. Yeah, so it takes in the command on or off, and then you're just setting the uh, setting the pin. I think oh, yeah. I think it's taking in a function inside it. So like the particle dot function. What how does the setup work if it only gets called once? Like, because you only run set up once, right? Yeah. Yeah. So then, what keeps calling that function? Like, how do you reference the particle function from code if set up only runs once? So, um... The listener. Is that is that part yeah. of the listener? Yeah. The listener, yeah. How do you set up the API, then? I think that is setting up. So this API. this oh, one, right. this function over here is setting up the API. So it's, it's probably has more it's the framework inside, inside of it that does that. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, so does the post have like slash LED in it? The post has slash LED in yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. Oh, so, so you're the clear the end point as LED. Oh, I can't. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
create a device. So in, in Texas and in California, there's like clay soil, so they have different soil textures and densities, and so during extreme cold and extreme heat, water gets sucked out, and then you know the foundation gets mm -hmm. messed up. And so you know you can't close the door sometimes, the windows don't shut or open, you know. So that's basically a foundation issue. So we use you know this along with other stuff to create and 3D print it a device that you place next to your house that checks the moisture level of the soil. And so if it is too moist, oh, sorry, if it's too dry, it sends you a push notification using the particle. Wet the soil. Yeah, to wet the. So it just lets you know that, okay, expect your door to close. Don't water. Don't water. Oh. Yeah, yeah. It's like you don't have foundation damage. Yeah, and we created it like. That makes more sense. It was like a $30 device, you know? Oh, just sell it for $30. Yeah. The water will fix it. Yeah, I didn't tend to get because I mean I can get into this all day. I didn't know you could watch it. This is just the most basic stuff. And so yeah, it's yeah first world problems. Yeah. So um, anyway, you guys saw how it, uh, you know how I did it over over a website. Can you do that through your phone? Can you make your exam right now? Yeah. Yeah. So that, like when you click the button, it oh. says a post. Ooh. Next yeah. level. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so either way, like you guys must have seen how like straightforward it is over here. Um, you know, it's it's basically like radio buttons and post command. Like it's HTML. There's no JavaScript. There's no CSS. Um, let me go really quick to the um, the build. So build startparticle.io gives you a console that you can that you can check. Um, you know, like you can create web hooks and stuff like that, and that's how you basically connect it to if this and that. Uh, you can have it set send uh, temperature data directly to a Google Sheet, so it automatically populates uh, rows in the sheet. You know, so you can see how you're doing over time. It. Uh, so, going back to uh, the GitHub repository that I set up. Where you go? Um, here, yeah. So I set up this GitHub repository. It has this code over here. I downloaded the, I cloned the repository or downloaded it, and I made an, um, I built it on my computer. So we're here. And over here, I basically um, I made it a little more complicated. You know, I had a content page, there's the title of the page, um, there's the layout, and then I added three different uh, views to that uh, layout. So, views, layout, page. Page, layout, views, views, layout, page. And then... <laughs> That's not memorized. <laughs> <laughs> you know, anything you guys remember, like, like oh yeah, yeah. Uh, so, you can, you can make it really complicated, like the button, you can give it, like, commands, uh, and then the command function you like call over here, you know. Um, there's there's a lot you can do, and then there's the access token, device ID, particle function that we're calling. There you go. And this is the base address, and here's like the post command that you do, you know. And uh, let me try to build it. How do we have it built? Um, here, this is basically what it looks like. All right. And so, um, you guys off. look over here. This like super dim or like the blue over there. Turn. It's already off. It's already off. Oh, right. Oh, yeah. Oh, look at that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> this is like all day. It's super quick, man. It's super, super quick. Yeah. yeah. It's really freaking awesome. And, you know, it gets even more powerful when you can use uh, this device, like the Electron, because you don't need any connectivity. It comes with a battery, and like you can be anywhere in the world. Have your device there. What does that What does that do? Like, it's the same thing, but this is Wi-Fi only. This is with a SIM card. Oh, SIM card. oh yeah, you were not wow. here. Yeah. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah, a global SIM card. You pay like three dollars a month. Wow. 
and control the whole world with these little rabbits. Love it. It's a place to be, guys. <laughs> we got this. We'll, we'll make change. <laughs> yeah. Actually, I have a repository, and there's a link over there to control like the same similar stuff with your Android phones, or your Android watches. Mm. So you can do the same exact thing with Xamarin for Android watches. Do you have like a bunch of LEDs in your home that you just turn on? Yeah. So what I what I try to do is, uh, you know, when I go com competing, I use uh, it is not quite a bit to you know create a device and then I show them that it's connected to the Internet of Things and it becomes like a member of the Internet Society. Yeah. You know, so whatever device you want. Yeah. How vulnerable is your home security now? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> all you have is an access token, right? Yeah, yeah. I mean, this access token is already up to the world. Like the world knows the access so token. So anyone, so you're going in. Right? And you can go in. You can yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. If I wanted to do something, so, so right, right now, any of us, right now. Yeah, like any of us can go there and change your. Yeah, like you guys can go, like literally go to the GitHub and. It, yeah. What would you do if it started blinking in Morse code? <laughs> <laughs> I'd be like, I'd be like, smack it on the head, <laughs> like, like your screen. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, how do you push the code from Xamarin to Apple App Store or Android App Store? That's a really good question. Very, very good question. So, on Android, it's significantly easier. You can just right-click on your Droid project and say um, archive for publishing, and you get the uh, APK file. And you can give your APK file to your friend. You know, so you can make an app like that in seconds and have a build out in freaking seconds, like mm -hmm. it's so fast. And uh, you know, they install it over Google Drive. You just put it on Google Drive, give them the link, they go to that link, download, and install. Mm -hmm. You know, so accept other sources. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. 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 And how about the Google Store? Oh, I was. Uh, I was. I was. No, 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 you didn't. Oh, Google, Google Store. Store. So, so what you can do is you can go to the Google Store and upload the APK. They allow you to do that. iOS does not allow you to do that. Or you can. There's also a direct um, connection. Once it's once you've already down, uh, uploaded the app the first time, if it has the same, um, hang it, key code. I, am, I, I forget what you call it. Like, yeah, there's. Uh, if you use the same authentication the first time for the same uh, thing, uh, for the same app, then they let you do it directly to, the, uh, to your computer, but, you know, mm -hmm. it's wrong. Anyway, for iOS, on the other hand, uh, you do something similar. You say archive for publishing, and then you go through so many different steps. Mm -hmm. Um, you need a developer account, you need to pay for that, and then yeah, you need to sign in. You gotta go through the code, I think, or whatever. Yeah, yeah. 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 yeah you need X code on your yeah. Mac. So you cannot give the app over like the internet, but you, if you get that person's device you connected, uh, similar, it'll pop up over here at the bottom. Connect an Apple device. You guys can also use like uh, a custom, um, what do you call it? Uh, distributor? Yeah. Test rails or... Yeah. You need like an enterprise. You need an enterprise for that. I mean, yeah. yeah. That's how small enterprises do. They they have their own little distributor, which is kind of like their own app store type of thing. It's a worse, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but you need a developer account. Are we used for beer? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That's what I thought. <laughs> any, any other questions, guys? Um, devices, you know. Yeah. Uh, sensors. Kind of, yeah. Let's go to Particle I.O. to buy their sensor? No, you can use any, any Raspberry Pi sensor. Where is this set up? Yeah, that's a great question. So, okay, so for example. Oh, crap. Okay, cool. Yeah, it didn't matter. So, there's, there's, some, there's different kinds of LEDs, like multicolored ones, you know, RGB, so it makes it look blue, green, yellow, depending on whatever you want it to make it. Uh, you can control like um, the servo motors, so it like it, it's super oh, yeah. precision based. So you can like turn on lights or turn off lights, you know. Uh, um, 
Yeah, it goes like, you know, whatever. Even attached to it. Even attached to it. Like, these are ultrasonic uh, distance sensors. So it's very, yeah, it's very. Uh, it's a what? It's a bat. It's a bat, yeah. But it's oh. very short yeah. range bat. Like yeah. the animal with the animal location. Bat. Bat. So it'll tell you uh, like I think this is like four meters distance, so it'll show you like oh two point eight nine, two point eight seven, so it's like very, very high precision. So you, you put that out in front of your car? This is what they have in a red light. <laughs> this, this is what, <laughs> this is what they have in the back of the car, <laughs> and it charges you like two hundred dollars more. I don't know. I think it's like thousands of dollars more. Oh, that's that's have, like, a that's yeah. 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 Oh, that's cool. Parking sensor, like this. It's yeah. like how much a cent or something. You know, it's like oh, let's let's integrate it. You know, and they they charge you a ton for it, but in reality, like you know, it's so cheap. You get you get like twenty nine sensors for ten dollars or something like that. Really? You know? Yeah, eBay, and it'll give you like this entire package to get started with. Nice. Yeah. Uh, one of these guys should car batteries. Yeah. It's made of LED lights. It's like thirty cents. Yeah. 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 Basically. So whatever LED turns on, that's going to be an eye. Yeah. Build a Roomba. So I have a question. How do you foresee this? Uh, you know. Ask all on like how do you any question? Any ideas? I was supposed to start with that. Okay, so <laughs> think about think about like a wind energy farm. Okay, wind energy companies spend more than two hundred thousand dollars just for replacement costs, like getting the uh, huge like uh, trailer. So like windmill. The windmill. No, no. Like the windmill's already there. They get these like trucks to move uh, like. Replace the part cranes. 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 They're gonna cream, but these cranes have to be super tall, you know, because they have to uh, get like the. Um, so there, there are three different parts: the generators, gearboxes, um, and like the blades. They're very expensive to replace. You know, you cannot get the entire machine down. Like when it's erected, you know, you could, you know, move it down, but. Right now, it's already erect, so you have to get a crane, uh, you know, move it. So it, it costs two hundred thousand dollars just to like get the parts to move it, and then you know the cost of the gearbox is different. So what you can do with this is you can sense vibrations, you can sense uh, heat. You know, fifty percent of all electronics in the world are destroyed because of heat. You know, so if you have sensors for heat, you know, like oh this is heating up too much. All right, send a push notification. Like oh it's heating up. Save money, save money, save money. So a lot like, of your this is the future, guys. So, so that's for a hollow windmill? Yeah. <laughs> no, this is an yeah. example. Oh, this is what I was thinking. Like, 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 oh, oh, at, oh okay. I thought you were talking about mine. I thought you were talking about mine. Yeah, yeah. I don't have a button on 20th. What's on? Yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. How do you apply at yeah. 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 cool yeah. yeah. well, well, like like yeah. 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 We can measure yeah. when the room is yeah. yeah. full of people, so yeah. you don't have to walk yeah. the room, yeah. right? Because yeah. yeah. they need to go a bit. Yeah. So we need the proximity sensor on the dashboard to show us. Yeah, yeah. Yes, Watson. The next hackathon. Yeah. How about you put in a suggestion to Jeremy Dangler? Um, IoT. IoT hack. Yeah. Yeah. We, we, we had it. Yeah. We had it. We had it. I wonder if we did. Oh, you had it. Yeah. We had it. That was three years ago. Yeah. About IoT. That was the one about fifteen. Yeah. Four Halloween, right? It was about four. It was one or two before Halloween. No, it was the one before Halloween. Yeah. Okay. Echo. Yeah. I remember Echo. Yeah. And the GPS thing is right there. So you, you can, can like, like I didn't know Echo was IoT though. I don't want to put that on my kid's backpack. Oh, I thought you were already in the room. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, it's too close. You gotta go. Yeah, no. <laughs> yeah, this this stuff is like amazing. Like, there's a GPS tracker. Like, <laughs> that was awesome. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Oh my Thank you. You guys, right. the future is today. Prime Minister. <laughs> <laughs>